Hi, Stephen from Owner Disso. In my last video, I showed that the 32-core M1 Max gamed like an RTX 3060, and the 16-core M1 Pro was akin to a GTX 1650. This is all well and good when your game is supported by macOS, and on the whole, gameplay is actually pretty decent. And even though we are seeing more and more games playable on macOS, there is no denying that Windows is where it is at for gaming. But since there is no bootcamp with the new M1 chip, one has to actually run Windows on a virtual mach machine using Parallels. Now it is very easy to install, and I installed the ARM-based Windows 11. Another benefit, of course, is the ability to run native Windows programs that won't run on the Mac OS. And since Microsoft announced ARM 64 EC, which allows developers to mix and match different types of code for Windows 11 on ARM apps, you have a decent chance of being able to run 64-bit programs on it. Can you play all Windows games using Parallels? No, you will likely be stuck with older games, DX10 and older. Even fairly modern games like Overwatch that I show here using 1920 by 1200 and high settings average 72 FPS, but the frame rate dips make it quite difficult to play competitively. So the object of this video is to see how much of a performance impact we get when we use Windows 11 via Parallels. Here I show Shadow of Mordor using high settings at the resolution of 1728 by 1117. Mac OS is on the left and Windows 11 via Parallels is on the right. Even though the Windows setup is showing a higher average frame rate, the minimum is 35% less, which will have a greater impact on the gameplay. Shadow of the Tomb Raider runs very well on Mac OS. Here it is at 1920 by 1200 using higher settings. Now, Parallels struggled on this, averaging only 4 FPS, plus you lose all the textures and sh shadow effects. So this highlights the limitations on using Parallels. Batman Arkham City at 1920 by 1200 high settings, this time Mac OS is averaging much higher. Again, the minimum frame rate takes a hit using Parallels. 23 FPS versus 84 on Mac OS. Now Borderlands 3 wouldn't run on Parallels, so I actually tested Borderlands 2 using the resolution of 1728 by 1117 and high settings. Now the good news, I can still use MSI Afterburner in Parallels to show the frame rate counter. Mac OS averaged 94 FPS and Windows 11 on the virtual machine averaged 58. Finally, I tried Thief at 1920 by 1200 using the normal quality preset. This game would stutter on both to be honest. Mac OS averaged 26 FPS but had a minimum of uh, 3 FPS and Parallels averaged 15 FPS with a stutter fest minimum of 0.5 FPS. Now lowering quality settings would probably help a little bit but it does showcase the issue of playing games on a virtual machine. Now averaging it all out, we see games running natively on macOS being just over 50% faster, but it is clear that the extra overhead of having to run on a virtual machine causes drop frames and generally a poor gaming experience, unless the game is pretty old and has low requirements. But still, if you have a good collection of old games, it is good to know that you can actually play them on the new M1 Mac. The other impact you have is on battery life. Now natively using macOS, I was easily getting about 20 hours of web browsing, but using the virtual machine, this dropped to between 6 and 7 hours. Still, it's not bad, but you might be better off using a Windows laptop with Intel Iris graphics. Now, thank you for watching. If you found my video useful, smash that like button, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.